What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with an unboxing for you of the Samsung Continuum for Verizon Wireless. It is a continuation of the Galaxy S series of devices we've seen permeate all US carriers. This guy brings something unique to the table. Let me show you what it is. So with all unboxings, let's take a quick look at the box. We have a picture of the device on the front and below is what's sort of unique about this. It's got a ticker, which is a super AMOLED display that's going to show you some snapshots of information. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Here's the device. You've got some hearing aid compatibility information on the left, rule the air on the right, and some package content listings on the back. Let's go ahead and dig in. Here is the Samsung Continuum. Push it off to the side for just one second and see what else we are going to have inside of the box. So we've got its 1500 milliamp hour battery, which is blue, we haven't seen a blue Samsung battery yet. We've got the wall charger, the USB uh, port. We've got a micro USB charging port. And we've got some tips and hints and shortcuts in there if I can ever get it out. I'll go ahead and need to let gravity do the work for us. Looks like there's a lot of uh, user guide information there uh, going to be inside. So if you fancy some reading, go ahead and take a look at that. Alright, so here is the Samsung Continuum. And before anybody starts screaming about the plastic on here, I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. But you can see that it does show something a little bit unique on the side. Touch here. So there's a ticker display. Uh, it's activated on the side. So I'll go ahead and uh, show you that. I'm going to whoop this off. And let me run through the specs of this guy for you. So it's going to set you back $199 on a two-year contract, of course, on Verizon Wireless. It's got a 3.4-inch Super AMOLED screen with a resolution of 480 by 800. Now, it might look like a much bigger screen, but it actually has another screen uh, right below it, which is also Super AMOLED. You can see it sort of on the angle there. There you go. That is a 1.8 inch Super AMOLED screen with a resolution of 400 by 96. Super AMOLED means that the touchscreen technology is actually integrated into the glass on the display, which is going to mean uh, that you're going to translate, it's going to translate directly rather, uh, to darker darks, richer colors, and better visibility in direct sunlight. So we talked about the 1500 milliamp hour battery, it's going to get you about 7 hours of talk time. This guy's got Android 2.1 on it. It's got Samsung's 1 gigahertz uh, Hummingbird processor, which is screaming fast. It has 336 megabytes of RAM, which is a little bit less than the 384 found in its Galaxy S brother at the Focus. It's got a 5 megapixel camera sitting on the back with LED flash and autofocus that can shoot video at 1280 by 720, which is 720p. And it's got Wi-Fi and built-in. Let's go ahead and pop in the battery and take a look at this ticker. I'm kind of excited uh, to see what it looks like. So if you're looking at Verizon Wireless and you're sort of debating between the Continuum or the Fascinate, let me go ahead and tell you the differences. So here is the Fascinate for Verizon Wireless. It's got a 4-inch screen and it's one display. They both utilize that Super AMOLED touchscreen technology. Uh, however, the Continuum here makes use of this ticker display, which I'll show you. It's going to give you a bit of information. It's also where your capacitor buttons are going to live uh, for the Android operating system. So if you want a more traditional phone with a larger display, the Fascinate is going to be a great option for you. If you're looking for something a little bit different and a different way to show your information and get quick view of things, you may want to take a look at the Continuum. But enough of me yabbering, let's go ahead and power the guy on. Alright, so in goes the battery. And push the back back on and we'll hit power at long last and see what this guy looks like. We're going to have to go through a bit of a Verizon activation period. Uh, the back of this is plastic, similar to what we've seen on the other Galaxy S devices, most notably the Fascinate. We'll go ahead and hit the power button and while that's booting on, uh, I'll show you a bit of the device. So on the left hand side, you're going to have volume up and down uh, buttons. You're going to have a micro USB charging port. You're going to have a little bit of a lanyard slot too if you want to carry it around that way in the upper left. On the right hand side you're going to have your micro uh, SD expansion card slot. You don't have to remove the battery to get to that, uh, which is quite nice. Let's see if we can see what size is going to come in here. I can get my thumb in there and push it out. There we go. It's going to come pre-installed with an 8 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. It's quite nice. Go ahead and push that back in, or at least attempt to. 
don't have long enough nails to do that. Uh, you've got a hard button, presumably, uh, for the camera down there as well. On the bottom, you've got your microphone port. Top, you've got 3.5 millimeter headset jack and you've got the lock button. Now one of the nice things I liked that Samsung did here is it got rid of that little door that you had to push back and forth to get to the micro uh, USB charging port. So it looks like that powered on, maybe we don't have any sort of Verizon wireless activation period, which is nice to go through. And we've seen right here a very familiar unlock screen. We've seen this on a TouchWiz phones in the past. Oh, we do have to activate it, unfortunately. But you can see the sort of capacitive buttons that are showing up there now uh, right above this new touch strip. Let's see if this touch will show us anything here. So right now it's just showing us the date. We'll go ahead and activate the phone and I will come right back. All right, so we've got the phone all booted up and set up. Let me show you this little landing strip uh, across the bottom. It's like the Pamela Anderson of phones here. Go ahead and there's capacitive buttons on the side. If you go ahead and just push your fingers on the side of them, you're going to either turn it on or turn it off. So I'll turn it on and get some access to some information. I'm not entirely sure what this is going to show yet uh, since it's not fully configured. It looks like you can show some uh, SNS, RSS. You can show Twitter updates here. So now it's pulling in some RSS feeds. If you click on it, it's going to go ahead and open it up for you. It's kind of a neat way to uh, display information. Although I'm not sure if we're going to inadvertently tap the screen. We're trying to use the capacitive buttons above it, uh, but we will definitely see. Uh, first impressions, it does have Bing Maps preloaded. It looks like the Google services uh, for whatever reason, are not here. See what the applications that are going to come pre-installed. We got the sort of the TouchWiz way of looking at things. So it is a 3G mobile hotspot cable, which is kind of nice. Go ahead and keep scrolling and see what else we have there. Uh, looks like Blockbuster is there. There's the just mentioned Bing. You have a car cradle. If you want to use Google Maps navigation, Gmail, gallery, settings, talk, task manager, Scrabble, kind of fun. Uh, mini diary. Looks like there's a Twitter client already built in. So there's some Wi-Fi settings, write and go, voice recorder, and the rest of the VCast bundled service. See down below, I'm getting some RSS stuff popping up on that little ticker, uh, which is kind of neat. So this is, uh, again, running Android 2.1. I'll use this guy for, uh, you know, for a little while, as I usually do, and come back with a full review and let you know if this is going to be a worthwhile upgrade to your current phone. Uh, for just a very quick size comparison, in case you're wondering how the display is going to look, again, this is a 3.4 inch display. Here is uh, the 4 inch Samsung Fascinate one more time. Go ahead and see that it is uh, noticeably smaller. Go ahead and stack them side by side, about the same uh, thickness. If you want to see sort of the continuing the Verizon tour, uh, here is the Droid X for a size comparison 4.3 inch phone uh, versus the uh, 3.4, so there's a big difference there. See how greasy my fingers appear to be. Go ahead and make a smartphone Verizon sandwich. You can see what those guys look like right there. Anyway, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Anything you want to see about the Samsung Continuum, leave it down in the comments and I'll be sure to address it in my review and following videos. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.